Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new and welcome to my first try a chapter reading vlog. So I recently put a story up on Instagram asking for what you guys would most like to see from me soon and I did have a few people replying saying they would like a try a chapter reading vlog so we're gonna give it a go today. I have five thriller books here, all of which I am really excited about reading. And today I am gonna read the first chapter of each of them and then I am gonna rank them in terms of which chapter I think was the best, the most gripping, the most exciting, the chapter that made me want to continue reading the most and therefore will probably read most immediately. So like I said, I've got five thrillers here. I have got They Never Learn by Lane Fargo, Before I Say I Do by Vicky Bradley, Rock Paper Scissors by Alice Feeney, The Twins by L.V. Matthew and I Found You by Lisa Jewell. All of these are hugely anticipated thrillers for me either because of reviews I have read or recommendations that I've had from you guys and I have really high hopes for all these books so today I'm going to read the first chapter of each of them and then we will find out which one has the best hook and which one I will read soon. So I think I'm going to start with I Found You by Lisa Jewell. You guys know Lisa Jewell is one of my favourite thriller authors. I just absolutely eat up her novels. In this one we follow two characters. So we follow Lily who is just newly married. She's been married to her husband for three weeks and then he fails to come home from work and leaves her in a country where she knows no one and has no idea what to do. On the flip side of this we have Alice. She finds a man on the beach outside her home with no belongings, no idea and no memory of who he is. So she invites him into her home and the story goes from there. I mean I'm assuming the missing husband is the man on the beach with no memory but I have no idea how we get from one to the other and I have no idea how it continues from there. So yeah I'm gonna read the first chapter just now and see how I feel feel. Let me see how many pages is this one. Okay so it's 16 pages the first chapter. That's actually a fairly long chapter for a thriller. I feel like most thrillers are usually like 10 pages max in terms of chapters. So yeah I will read the first chapter just now and let you know how I feel. <laughs> like completely hooked. The first chapter we're following Alice, the woman who lives near the beach and she basically right at the beginning sees this guy sitting on the beach in the rain just like looking out to sea looking completely lost and she watches him for a while and then she goes down and speaks to him and it's very clear straight away that this guy is like not with it like clearly he does not really know where he is he's asking her where he is he's like not really answering questions probably seems quite sort of like disorientated and she just sort of like laughs and walks off and I'm like Immediately I do not like her character and it kind of makes me like not want to read her parts because I'm assuming maybe the next chapter is going to be Lily's point of view. Yes, so it's going to go like Alice, Lily, Alice, Lily. So far, don't like Alice. However, I am still very intrigued by the fact that this guy supposedly does not have any memory of who he is or where he's come from. So like Alice obviously as it says invites him into her home. I just think like right from the start as soon as she met him she should have I don't know alerted someone or like asked him what was going on or like done something to help him instead of just walking off and then coming back later when he was still standing there. And I just don't really like her whole like demeanour you know I'm not really like a huge fan of hers. But I am very intrigued by this man, where he's come from, what's happened to make him lose his memory, if he has actually lost his memory or if he's like playing a game. I don't know. I need answers. That is always the thing with Lisa Jewel books. I need answers. And sometimes her books, like I've given like three stars because the actual reading of it, I've not been that amazed by like the twists or the storyline or the plot or whatever. But I always just need to know what's going to happen. She always keeps me reading just so I can get answers. It's not, her books aren't the type that I can walk away from, but then they're also not necessarily five star reads. But because I always like read her books so fast and I can't walk away from them, she is an autobi author for me. I don't know if that makes sense but it makes sense to me. So yeah, so far I feel like this one's probably not going to be at the top of the ranking 
but next I think I will pick up The Twins by L.V. Matthews. I actually have two books by L.V. Matthews on my shelf but I've never read anything by this author. However, I have heard very, very good things. So in this one, we follow two sisters named Margot and Cora who are obviously twins but have very different lives. I think they're not estranged but they are like living very different lives. But they have an unspeakable childhood incident that haunts them both. And then this terrible secret comes to light and they are pitted against each other in a race for survival. I've been told very good things about this book and this author so I am very excited about it. This first chapter is eight pages. So literally like half the size of the Lisa Jo one. Although the Lisa Jo writing was like the font was really big, this looks a bit smaller. So they might kind of level out a little bit. So yeah, let's give this first chapter a go. <laughs> intrigued. This one definitely has me more hooked than I found you, that's for sure. This first chapter we are following Margot who is obviously one of the twins and she is a nanny for like an upper class British family and at this time I think they're on like a yacht and she's talking about being in the galley and like making food for them and everything and this is completely off topic but all I can think about is Below Deck because I'm currently making my way through Below Deck Mediterranean. So the fact that she's talking about like being in the galley with this like upper class family it's giving me Below Deck vibes and I know it's going to be completely different from Below Deck. It's going to be a lot darker and more thrilling but it's giving me the vibes. It's like obviously like painting a picture of this upper class family who just like don't really care about her at all and she just like runs around after them but it's making it clear that she's happy about that because she's like trying to distract herself from whatever has happened in her past and she like brings out a bottle of pills that she needs to take for unknown reasons and she then drops them because one of the kids gives her a fright and loses a ton of them so she realizes that she may run out before she can get more so obviously that is like a little bit of a tension point there and then the last lines of the first chapter just really got me hooked so it says I busy myself with tending to the others people don't realize you're not talking to them about your own life if you're putting food on their tables if you're doing their laundry if you're smiling at their stories I like living their lives because it's easier than living my own my life has ghosts now I want to know what the ghosts are. And then the next chapter then goes on to Cora. So again, I'm assuming we're going to go Margot Cora, Margot Cora. I do love a dual perspective in thrillers because I like how you'll get little answers and questions from one side and from the other. And because you're constantly going between them, there's the opportunity for you to like miss things that happen to one person or there's opportunity for like one person to give you a very different version of events to the other one. And I like how you can get all sorts of like twists and turns because of that. So yeah, definitely more more hooked by this one at the moment. The Twins by L.B. Matthews is definitely winning and I want to find out more about these twins. So two books down, I think next I will pick up Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Beanie. This book was like huge recently because I'm pretty sure it was a book of the month book and so many people were talking about how good it is. So I'm hoping I'm gonna agree. I'm actually not entirely sure what this one is about. So we've got Adam and Amelia who are spending their 10th wedding anniversary in the Scottish Highlands but then their romantic trip takes a dark turn and they both start to wonder can they trust the one they're with because every couple tells little white lies only for Adam and Amelia the truth is far more dangerous. Okay so that literally gives us like no real clue of what this book is about other than the fact that we've got these two this couple who can't trust each other. So I'm gonna give the first chapter a go and I will let you know. Okay, this right here, I wanna drop everything and just start reading this book right now. This is 100% top of the list so far. I know I've still got two more books, but I literally don't even wanna read anything else right now. I just want to read this. That first chapter, that is like one of the best first chapters to thriller ever. Oh my God, I'm hooked. I'm 
absolutely hooked. So again, this is a dual perspective. As I said, love a dual perspective. And in the first chapter, we follow Amelia and she is driving her and Adam up to the Highlands for this romantic break. And it's very much like a trip to try and save their marriage, which kind of reminds me of... There's a film with Emily Ratajkowski and Aaron Paul and I can't remember what it's called. Oh my god, where's my phone? My phone's even in this room. There is a film where they go on like a romantic weekend to try and like save their marriage and they go to Italy and it's a thriller and it's a really good film so if you've not watched it, watch it. But it gave me those vibes and basically we find out that Adam, her husband, has a condition called prosopagnosia prosopagnosia which is a neurological glitch where he cannot see distinguishing features on faces including his own so sometimes he just like does not recognize his wife at all because he can't see like the distinguishing features to know that it's her so he has gotten used to recognizing her by like the smell of her perfume or like the way she holds his hand things like that and right away that has me intrigued because I want to see more of that and how that comes into play in this novel I think that's really interesting. I'd actually never heard of that condition it makes you want to research it a little bit and it's caused problems in the marriage as well because he didn't want to have children because he couldn't bear the thought of not being able to recognise his children which is obviously completely fair enough but Amelia is also saying like she has like some sort of past some sort of secret that we don't know about yet that I want to know more about but anyway they show up at this place that they're going to be staying in and it's like an old converted chapel with like stained glass windows and everything which is immediately creepy to me in the middle of the Scottish Highlands in the middle of nowhere and then they go and they get to the front door it's snowing it's like a complete blizzard so they're obviously quite isolated it looks like they're probably gonna be stuck here and then they get to the front doors and they're locked and the message from like the owners said that they'd be open so they like go round this chapel trying to find another door to get in and when they get back to the front the doors are wide open like I look up shielding my eyes from the snow and see that he is staring at the front of the chapel. The huge wooden doors are now wide open. <laughs> like, I'm hooked. I'm hooked and in the next chapter we go on to Adam so we'll find out more about him and his thoughts on the marriage and everything but <gasps> I love how it's got like proper creepy vibes. My favourite thrillers always have like creepy vibes that could be like slightly like almost supernatural but they're not. They have like real reasons. Real people are doing these things but it has the idea that it could be supernatural if that makes sense. I just love good creepy vibes and this one definitely has creepy vibes. Creepy isolated Scottish setting and I just want to read it right now. But alas I must put it down and we will go on to our next book which I think what have we got left? I'm just going to pick up whatever is closest to me. So we've got Before I Say I Do by Vicky Bradley and this is one that I've had like on my monthly TBR a couple of times because I have been really intrigued in reading it because it's like a psychological thriller which is my favourite. In this one we have Julia who is about to get married and she has like a secret from her soon-to-be husband that she is like determined to keep hidden away. He is not allowed to know about it and then when she walks down the aisle she thinks everything's gonna be okay but then the man that turns to face her isn't her fiance. It's his best man because her fiance is missing and her past is coming back to catch her. That concept immediately had me hooked. I have been like, longing to read this for so long so I think it sounds really really interesting. So yeah we're gonna give it the first chapter a go. That one I forgot to say rock paper scissors I think the first chapter was 10 pages. This one is 11 pages. And once again, do we have dual perspective? I think we do. We've got someone called Alana and then we've also got Julia, who is the woman who's supposed to get married. Okay, another dual perspective. Let's give this one a go. So I've just read the first chapter of Before I Say I Do and I'm definitely intrigued. I'm actually not sure where to rank this one at all. Basically we're following Julia on the 
morning of like her wedding day and she's getting ready with her bridesmaid Lucy and immediately there's like all these like little questions being put out there. She is very, very jumpy. She keeps going on about her past and how like her past is gonna like come back to get her before anything's even happened. Like she's very anxious to get this wedding done as if it's gonna like save her from something. I don't know, it's just weird. And then when someone mentions siblings, she about passes out. When she's asked by the registrar if she's ever had any other name than the one she's got right now, it's clear that she has, but she lies and Lucy lies for her as well. So she's got this very, very dark, mysterious past, but I don't know, the whole thing's just very weird. It's a very bizarre like situation. And then obviously she goes in and she goes to get married. And when she goes in to try and walk down the aisle, oh my God, like she gets the music playing and everything and like starts walking down the aisle, even though people are telling her not to do it. But she's like, it's my wedding day. Like, just let me walk down the aisle. And then she gets halfway down and realizes Mark, her fiance isn't there. It's all very embarrassing. And then she gets told that Mark has been missing for about 24 hours. And she says that this is her, this is God punishing her for the stuff that she has done in the past. So obviously I want to know where Mark is, I want to know what she's done in the past, I want to know why she's so weird and jumpy and anxious. So I am definitely intrigued, I definitely do want to keep reading. I feel like this one is more intriguing than I found you, less intriguing than rock paper scissors, but I'm not sure which one's more intriguing out of this one and the twins. So I'm gonna put them together just now and we'll have a little think about it. And I'll go on to my last book of this little challengey, vloggy thing. So I have They Never Learn by Lean Fargo, this one. I'm so damn excited to read it, it sounds so good. It's basically about this English professor, Scarlett Clark, who every year she like murders a guy, like a man who's just like a bad man, who like treats women really badly. She will murder one each year. Everything's going according to her master plan until she loses control with her latest victim. And then we have a student, Carly, who is like escaping her abusive father. She's at this university. She's trying to like just escape into the background and be happy for a change. But then her best friend and roommate, Alison, is assaulted at a party. And Carly becomes obsessed with making the attacker pay and turning her fantasies about revenge into a reality. So we've got like a feminist serial killer and we've got this young girl who also wants to murder. So we've got two murderous women, which I am always down for. And I also really like that it's set in a university. I do like a university setting. So we're gonna give this one a go. Let's find out how many pages it is. Oh, it's another dual perspective. Lovely, I hoped it might be. So the first chapter is from Scarlet. One, two, three, four, five, six, six pages. Six pages of Scarlet before we get into Carly. So I'm gonna read it now. <laughs> I am hooked. I want to read more so badly. This one seriously gave me mindfuck vibes and you guys know I loved the mindfuck series when I read it earlier this year. It's one of my favourite series of all time. I just love the idea of this female serial killer going and getting revenge against disgusting men. So if you have more recommendations in that whole realm of book then please let me know but this one seems like it's gonna be very similar the first chapter we're following Scarlett Clark the professor who is murdering a young man who was in her class who was one of like four guys who raped a young girl at a party and he's disgusting and he dies and it's great absolutely love that 
cannot wait to read more. I feel like it's going to have more of the whole morality justice question, like is what she's doing right? Can we condone it? And then also obviously this young student who we're going to read about as well, Carly, when she starts to get an idea of making her friends attack her pay. She's probably going to have all those ideas in her head as well and I'm going to assume the two are going to join forces at some point, which would be great. But yeah, hooked. No doubt about it. So in terms of ranking for these five books that I've tried a chapter for today, we'll go from like worst to best. None of these were bad, like obviously I'm still excited to read all of these books, but just in terms of like ranking them in order, we will go with in last place, I Found You by Lisa Jewell. Like I said, I am really excited by this concept, but that first chapter, like the character in it was really annoying and it just didn't get me as hooked as the rest of these. Next. I really don't know between The Twins by L.B. Matthews and Before I Say I Do by Vicky Bradley. I feel like maybe in fourth place I'd say Before I Say I Do because I'm more excited about the concept than I am by that first chapter. Like I feel like that first chapter again was a little bit annoying. Like Julia in it was just like so like jumpy and all over the place. It was kind of like a lot getting thrown at you all at once. It was a bit sort of like hammering the nail too far home. If you know what I mean, like, it was just like, she's got a past, she's anxious, she's trying to keep a secret, blah, blah, and it was like, it was all like a lot, but I was kind of like, yeah, we get it, we get it, she's got this past, this dark past that she doesn't want anyone to know about, and she's quite anxious about it. It was just, it was quite melodramatic, I feel, that first chapter. So we're going to put that one in fourth place. In third place, we're going to put The Twins by L.B. Matthews. Like I said, I'm really intrigued by this one. I want to know what this ghost, what these ghosts are in Margot's past. And I want to find out more about both twins. So yeah, this one was kind of like in the middle. And then the last two will definitely be reads that I will be reading very, very soon. But I think just about second place will be They Never Learn by Lane Vargo. Like I said, extremely excited for this, extremely excited for the female serial killer vibes and just seeing her get revenge on all these horrible men. But first place has to go to Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Beanie. That first chapter was just like the perfect first chapter. It had the creepy vibes, it had secrets that we don't know too much about yet, it had that isolated setting. It'll kind of have an unreliable narrator I guess as well because we can't trust Adam when he says he's talking to who he's talking to because he can't distinguish their features. Like, it kind of has all of my favourite tropes in one like isolated setting, gothic, creepy vibes, unreliable narrator. Yeah definitely this one has to come first and this one I will definitely be reading ASAP because Oh, I'm so excited to read more. So yeah, that is the ranking for these five thriller books. Like I said, I'm still really excited. I'm still really excited to read all five of these books, but this will just be the order in terms of what I thought of the first chapter. So I hope you enjoyed this little try a chapter reading vlog. Please let me know if you did and if you'd like to see more of these. I can obviously do them with more thrillers or I can do them with some romance books, whatever you guys would like. If you went to the end of this video, pop the scissors emoji down below just for rock, paper, scissors. I mean, I'm assuming there is a scissors emoji. There is a scissors emoji. Okay, if you made it to the end of this video, pop the scissors emoji down below just to let me know that you made it to the end of the video and that you enjoyed your time here. But as always, if you did enjoy this video, then do please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe for more bookish content from me. Comment down below with any of your thoughts and feelings. I do reply to every single comment. I love you all and I will see you in my next one.